freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your round one recap for this week's Rocket Mortgage Classic. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, happy Thursday, happy almost July, and happy early Independence Day. Uh, thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. A lot to be happy for, uh, not even for our fellow Americans. If you're a European, I believe this was a great day for European golf. Uh, but Rick, happy happy Independence Day to you as well. If 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 you observe Independence Day, I don't know this day and age. Yeah, that's true. I've uh, I don't observe many holidays. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm just down to Groundhog's Day as the only observable holiday. Punxsutawney Phil will always have a special place in in my heart, but the rest of them just not gonna cut it for me. Uh, Patrick, why why such a good day for, for European golf today? Was it because of uh, the iceberg, Ludwig Aberg, or was there another reason? The iceberg imposed mm. his will around yes. Detroit Rock City, the Motor City, in front of Luke Donald, El Capitan himself. I mean, what a ball-striking clinic. The driver, 14 out of 14 fairways today. Uh, Justin Ray had a great stat that hasn't been done since John Rahm at the Masters, his first round when he shot seven under with the double bogey. And it was just on a string or has hit 14 fairways while averaging over 300 yards. And like I said on Tuesday, Rick, you put this guy out in foursomes with probably a veteran presence, maybe a Tommy Fleetwood type who loves his iron play as much as the next guy. And you have a formidable four set of foursome teams with Hovland and whoever, you know, Rory and potentially a Shane Lowry. Rom, you could stick him with me, and it wouldn't matter if he's anything like the 2021 Ryder Cup at Whistling Straits. <laughs> and Americans better watch out. A lot of these Americans, they're not playing great golf at the moment. I, I, I'm sure we'll talk about one of them who thought he found something. Like we all think we find something in the game of golf until you don't. Uh, and, and so I think it's a great day for European golf. This might be the day they won the cup. They look uh, Lud- back on it. Ludwig Aberg uh, here on June 29th has just won the Ryder Cup for the Europeans. Congratulations, Europeans. Uh, shot a 65 with bogeys on each of his uh, last two holes. Patrick, you mentioned it. I mean, it was statistically, it was awesome. Um, he had got this thing to nine under par. He is not going to be the leader. He's not going to be the favorite heading into round number two. But um, I think there was a lot of optimism about his chances not only kind of now that he's got his tour card for the rest of the year and for next year, but also for this week. I mean, I'm, I'm looking back at our, at our, um, you know, our, our betting preview. Like we had Ludwig top 30. We had uh, Ludwig to win. That was, that was you. I have him as my one and done selection. Uh, two of us had him in our best bets, top Nordic and top 20. So, I mean, th- this, this was a guy that we were hoping to get this type of performance out of. And he lived up to the hype through at least, uh, well, I was going to say through at least 18, through at least 16 holes, he lived up to the hype. Exactly. And look, if you're not following our bets, you're probably doing all right. We are not the sharpest crew collectively. Exactly right. If you're not following the bets, congratulations, you are winning money. But every so often, you know, a blind squirrel finds a nut. And that that could potentially be us this week with the, the amount of exposure we have to the iceberg. Hmm. And a great mm-hmm. name to boot. So um, mm-hmm. before we dive too deep into the rest of the top of the board, notables, all that fun stuff, I, I just want to start with – let's start with the bad boys, right? I mean, Justin Thomas, four over 76. He's currently in a tie for 150th. Hideki Matsuyama, three over 75 in a tie for 147th. Austin Eck Goat, no. Austin Eck wrote two over 74. That's a tie for 138. And our defending champion, Tony Finau, actually rally to get this thing in at even par 72 all four of those guys who were uh some pretty substantial liabilities in the betting market who were some of the higher price golfers uh in fantasy or on the odds board all outside the top 100 right now and you were kind of alluding to jt's problem more of the same and he added this event to try to get himself in the playoffs gosh and 
I think the double bogey and the finishing bogey are kind of emblematic of his entire year where he is just trying to be way, way too perfect, way too precise. Uh, the double bogey, he tried to hit this hero flop shot where mm -hmm. he, he had he had green to work with. He, it didn't need to be that uh, drastic, and he left it in the rough. Uh, chips went on, doesn't make the putt coming back, and then he did pretty well on 18 just now to get out with a bogey. He had a nine iron in hand from the middle of the fairway, tries to go at the pin, launches it long. You can't go long on, on a Donald Ross golf course. Uh, leaves the chip short again and then gets up and down, makes like a 10-footer up the hill. But for him, it, it's really just – we talk about with, with Scotty Scheffler, the decision-making process of knowing kind of what pins to attack when it's okay to have 25 to 20 feet. And it's almost like his inability to hold putts with consistency is making is forcing him to try to be – precise the entire time and when it, when it's on it's great like he was the final 54 holes at the travelers championship it was fantastic but when it's off you have rounds like this you have rounds like the second round at the u.s open where it's really fine margins but it's really bad so look on that take show where you guys give me a lot of crap for scotty scheffler in the eye test i also dropped that justin thomas might be the new ricky fowler and P the PGA Tour has since released him congratulating Keegan Bradley on the 72nd hole. He waited for him. He waited for Ricky Fowler after his 60. Uh, he's tweeting a lot lately, right? Predictions, predicting the U.S. Open, taking to social media. And I kind of think I was right. So I just want to say that. It's and fun. honestly – Scotty Scheffler hasn't won since I said that as well. So yeah, no, no, no. St st stick with the <laughs> stick with the Scotty or the uh, Justin Thomas stuff. You're doing good on the Justin Thomas stuff. D don't 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 keep bringing up the the Scotty stuff. It doesn't it doesn't end up well for you. Th this is kind of interesting though. So there is. I think he's going to make the playoffs, right? Like I'm pretty sure he's going to make the playoffs, even with like a miscut this week. He'll drop to 68th, top 70, get in. He's got a couple more events to go, and he's he's going to play the big one. So like whatever, but there is nothing worse in golf. Uh, I mean, where a guy who is considered like a top 10 player in the world at the beginning of the season to be completely healthy throughout and miss the play. Like everybody makes the playoffs in golf and it, it would be a stunning waste of a year is what it would be. If he did not find himself in the FedEx cup playoffs, it would be shocking. Yeah. It, it would just be shocking to think Justin Thomas, a 15 time PGA tour winner, you know, he won a major last year. He won the players championship the year before that. And this year he just goes winless. He hasn't contended on a Sunday since the Canadian open in 2022, the one that Rory won. Um, well, I guess Rory won a couple of them, but it, it would just be stunning. And yeah, I guess a waste of the year and you have to put him on the Ryder cup team though. Which is sick, isn't it? I agree. Yes and no. <laughs> like, for him, yeah, definitely sick. But potentially an ugly situation. I think, you know I'm a glass half full type of guy, Rick. Of course, yeah. He did drive, he is driving the ball a lot better. Like, he yeah. was good today. He was fourth off the tee, 137th in approach. A dead last around the green by a mile. Not even close. And then 118th with the flat stick. So, yes, he did He did drive it well. Which kind of makes the approach numbers that much more concerning. But, the, the, I mean, they've been bad all year. I, I think if the season ended today, it would be his second worst approach season. And the worst would be like his rookie year. Yeah, not good. Not good. All right, let's turn the tide and get some positivity back in here. Uh, the boys went out early and had their way with the golf course. Detroit Golf Club, uh, on average, played about 1.6 under par, but it played closer to two strokes under par in the morning wave, and we got a couple of fast starters. Uh, Colin Morikow and Ricky Fowler. Where do you want to start, Patrick? We'll, we'll go with wherever you want to go. That's where we'll go. Uh, let's start with uh, Colin. Colin Morikawa, a six under 66 bogey free goes out in 32. That was the back nine on the golf course 
a 34 on the front nine, his second nine. Uh, this this felt a lot more under control. Uh, he did not do anything amazing. 21st off the tee, 57th on approach, 22nd around the green, 26th with the putter. It's just a well-rounded Thursday to put himself inside the top 10 heading into the second round. He, he called it easy today, yeah. uh, which is a very uh, a welcome comment to hear from Colin Morikawa. And he even said, regarding his 63 last week at the travelers to miss the cup by one after the opening 74 that he didn't even feel like he hit the ball well there, but he found something during his pro-am and he wouldn't tell the media what it was, but he said he it's it, such a fraud. He, he, <laughs> he is, I love him so much. He is the word. He lives in his own world about what is happening to him, the state of his game. It's probably good, right, to be completely detached from reality from the state of his game, but it, it is so funny how he treats this stuff. He is definitely delusional. Yes. Like, he's in a good way. Yes, correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is actually – I can't believe you called him a fraud. Welcome <laughs> welcome, welcome to the freaking party, Rick. It's yeah, about time. He's the one and only fraud, Rick, but it's, like, in a, such a good way. <laughs> God. So, what, so, so he wouldn't tell he wouldn't tell us what he found in the pro app. He won it. And then he worked on it at at the range and he was like, Oh my God, this is it. I got the secret sauce. I'm not even gonna tell Justin Thomas about it. Uh, but the thing that stuck out to me about this round was he only birdied one par five. So one under on the par fives, a lot of room for improvement. And something I didn't know, like everyone else in the freaking world, he implemented aim point at the PGA championship. Uh, so his putting numbers have improved ever since he's gaining strokes and it's always, if Colin putts, he'll contend type of deal. It is. Uh, I don't know where you stand on this. I, I, I aim point obviously gets a bad rap for how long it takes aim point express. Think about how long aim point actually is. Um, but it, it is like by far the best way to putt, right? Oh yeah. I, I mean, I, it, the, the whole going from greens reading books to not being able to use them and then, like, literally all putting is is trying to figure out the the speed, the line, and then execute that. And if you can – if you have a way to figure out the line very um, reliably and then you know the speed basically because you can run the stimp in the morning, like, it is by far the best way to putt. Yeah, exactly. It, it kind of takes all the uh, artistry out of it almost. And a lot of these guys this day and age – Outside a few of them, they're all very linear, mechanical, you know, see ball, hit ball type players. Uh, and yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It is the best way to putt. I don't love it just because you you turn on the drive chip and putt and we have three-year-olds <laughs> doing aim point on the 18th green at Augusta National. And you're like, what the hell is going on right now? <laughs> this is not what they envisioned when they created this thing. Uh, but for the pro level, yeah, more power to them. Any way you can get an edge, you should, definitely should. But and, and for Colin, it's clearly working. Uh, the par five scoring, if it ticks up, he'll, he'll definitely be there. But it's been it's almost two years since he last won. It, it's been quite a while. He that's on the top of his mind certainly. And yeah, this would be a great spot for him. And if he's putting, he'll make enough birdies. Six hundred sixty six for Colin. A five under sixty seven. For one of the co-favorites, Josh, who was it, please? That's right. I love that he's playing well again. We can just run this drop straight into the ground. I mind just however often you need to. It is he. This the the tournament kicked off with three co-favorites. It was Finau. It was Morikawa. It was Ricky Fowler. And uh, so far, so good for Ricky. This has been a, a constant. You know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, get yourself in the mix. No different here uh, around Detroit Golf Club. Uh, he, he just looks really good. And I, I don't know if you heard about what he said about his finish, but, you know, sometime nature intervenes and bodily functions occur. This and is it, the most relatable thing. I feel this big time. He said, uh, ba uh, what, what do you say? A bad bathroom break cost him two late bogeys or something like that? Yeah, he said from the fifth hole in, there there aren't a lot of bathrooms out there. <laughs> um, and and he really had to go. So much, yes. <laughs> and especially in white pants, no less. I mean, that he is playing with fire 
at I, that point. I, I'm actually ready to petition removing those bogeys from from his card because this this is this is bigger than golf. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And honestly, to just come away those last last handful of holes, only one over. Job well done to him. Uh, he, he you know he did drop two there at the end. Ah. Uh, but it, it could have. There's a there's a tweet in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think the news cycle has already turned over. They're on to they're on to the next thing. How Europe won the cup today, most likely. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just awesome. Like you said, it's awesome to see Ricky Fowler play well. It kind of seems like a from a betting perspective, kind of like that Jason Day win at the Byron Nelson, where he'd always be around fifty to one, fifty ish to one. Then he jumps up into the favorites and he wins. I, I thought for Ricky, it was one of the. It could have gone two ways this week. It could have he'll contend and potentially win, or he'll just kind of burn out a little bit uh, after the U S open, after the travelers championship as well. And to see him play well in the morning tea time, uh, he has plenty of time to rest now. Uh, it, it'll be, uh, you know, hopefully another contention run. I, I think he has like 15 top twenties already this year or something like 13 out of 19 or something. It, it's ridiculously consistent. Yeah. He's been awesome. Um, we will, talk about the leaders and point out a couple of highlights because some very interesting scores were made around Detroit Golf Club today. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. Don't miss Big Three Hoops, Saturday on CBS. And we're back. Uh, the top of the board, a pair of 64s by one Taylor Moore, two Peter Quest, Peter Monday queued into this thing. So he is trying to add a big payday, add some status to his life. But Taylor Moore, Patrick, you saw this coming. Uh, he was your matchup this week over Adam Hadwin. Now, let's see where Adam is. Adam he played is pretty well. <laughs> this is brutal. You have the guy in the lead. It's only a two shot lead. Yeah, this is going to crash and burn for me. Uh, we didn't even touch on Hideki in the one and done. Just absolute bloodbath for us in, in that regard but yeah taylor moore is the type of guy it, he's almost kyle always brings up sam burns in these type of events like these are the yeah. type of events where sam burns is just going to crush and has crushed mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's because he is also a valspar championship winner but taylor moore is the type of player he has a skill sets to just roll through these type of events where there's only you know two or three really big names in the field I uh and even though he's coming off, I think three missed cuts in a row, he was just like slightly off, missed a couple by a few strokes. And you put him on an easy golf course where there's a bit more leeway and something like this happens where his talent level is allowed to shine through. And it was apparent there with the 64. I um, had a, I was eavesdropping on him at the range on at Oak Hill uh, a couple of, what was that? A month and a half ago. And I loved everything I was hearing. First off, he's, his game's awesome. I, you, you're right. He has the skill set for all that good stuff. But um, he's like a professional, right? Like he, him and his team, they don't mess around. They've got everything in order. They're working on the right thing. It just, it was such a good, everything I heard, I was like, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, yeah, love, love the way he's kind of setting up and nice to see him back on track after three straight missed cuts. Currently eight under. He's tied with Peter Quest. Um Peter Quest went to BYU. I have now emptied the chamber on things that I know about Peter Quest. Uh, he finished T14 at the Byron Nelson with a sponsor's exemption. He does have some status on the Corn Ferry Tour, but hasn't been given a start this year. So he's only played the Byron. He played at the Canadian. I believe he made the cut there as well. And then this week, um, BYU. I believe he's from California. Southern. Yes, I know. Where's Fresno? Northern? Sacramento? Uh, um, I, I thought Fresno was like central. Okay. See, people don't want to say that there's a central California, right? It's either northern what's, or southern California. What's Sacramento? I That's central? northern California. No, that's northern California. So Fresno, oh. yeah, Fresno is um, like very inward. Or uh, sorry, like, like away from the ocean. What's that called? Sure, inward. Inland. Jeez, I couldn't think of I, inland <laughs> is what I was trying to think of. It's very inland. 
uh, between like Bakersfield and Stockton. So he he was not he, he was not growing up in Fresno getting the coastal waves. That's more that's more desert golf. Okay, like uh, like Reno. Reno's it. Wait, are you saying like close in proximity? No. Yeah. Um, okay. I see where you're going. And like, yeah, it's like, it's like basically the same distance from like the state line of Nevada as it is from the coast. Okay, cool. Yeah. So guy grew up Reno, just <laughs> it's not that good, it's Reno. <laughs> in the casinos every night. He kind of, he kind of has a look to him where he's like, that guy could be a villain in, in some like bad rom-com movie. He's got the hair, he fantastic hair, great face structure. And potentially a villain this week as well. You know, everyone's going Ricky Fowler, Ricky Fowler. Uh uh-uh, uh, Peter Quest said not so fast. Uh, my question to you, Rick, I don't know if you know this. Nate Lashley, was he a Monday Q or just like a super late ultra? No, he one? was a super late Wednesday night ad. Okay. Gotcha. But I, I, I really was going because he, yeah. So then he went, so then Lashley gets in Wednesday night, goes wire to wire. Mm hmm. And now Peter Quest trying to Monday Q and run this thing down. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, it, it would be. And I mean, these normal, the normies, the normal events, mm-hmm. uh, they've produced some really great stories so far this year. You think about Chris Kirk against Eric Cole back at the Honda Classic and a few others. And, and this has the potential if Quest can uh, complete his quest. Mm. Uh, God, I'm in. A, I'm on a heater tonight. You're, you are uh, hot. To the to the winner circle, it would make for a a fantastic week, uh, storyline wise on the PGA Tour. He doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. That's that would change this week if he won. He would definitely get a Wikipedia page if he was able to close this one out. Um, do I have to hit any of these other notables? Let's see. Doug Gim played well. That was good to see. Sam Bennett played well. That was nice to see. Anybody else we need to hit? Oh, uh, Dylan Wu made an albatross, and Sam Ryder dunked one, dunked it from 119 yards for Eagle. Ryder seven under par. Dylan Wu also seven under par. That was. I, I have I have some concerns about Dylan Wu's albatross. Oh, I'd like to hear them. He made a two. What happens? He made a two on that par five. Of right. the three one three challenge. Oh no. What happens if he goes one three over the next three rounds on the other ones? So he actually he did too much. Exactly. He he's 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 trying to be too too philanthropic. Well think, they it, should actually they should it should be six six two six that they should double it. I, I think I think that's the one he made it on. He started on the back. He said yeah, he, he made it on fourteen. Yeah. Yeah. So there's potential drama brewing in Detroit right now. Uh, Could you imagine I, I think if he makes an albatross and a whole, and an ace in the same tournament during a stretch of golf that calls for it, but he actually did did more? I I think it's like I think it's gonna happen. I would put money on I might just bet the next three days Dylan Wu to make a one and one. That'll be sick. It's good just like how weird this challenge is and has become yes it would almost be it, it's so right. impossible to do that the only way to to do it is to just break it and do it but not do it exactly um so tournament directors right now i haven't reached out for comment but i can only imagine they're running around wild chickens with heads cut off I imagine it's insured. Have you ever you do do you know do do normies do do normal people know that people don't work in the industry that like all of the stuff that happens at sporting events is insured? Like, like when they give away a car at your local like golf outing, like that's insured, and they pay like five hundred dollars, and then if somebody actually makes one, you know, the insurance company pays for it. Like, I I, I imagine this is insured, and they will be like, no, 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 he didn't go three one three, he went two one three. Or whatever. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and that and that's when we we the people take to the streets, pickets, picket fence, picket signs in hand. Three, one, three, three, one, three. He had an albatross, a birdie. He had an albatross, an eagle, a birdie, a par, and a bogey today. 
So Dylan Wu had himself a full day. Anything else interesting happened before we talk about the betting favorites? Um, I don't think so. Hmm. Could be wrong. Who's in dead last? I always like to see. Oh boy, Tom. Oh, what happened to him? Oh, Tommy boy. Bad day for the Toms. Um, is Tom Kim hurt? I saw some ankle tape. Okay. I saw some wrist tape, which has been around for a while. He's had that for a while. He is certainly working out more. His his ball speed has gone up since he's first gotten out on tour. Yeah, he's also the other thing that I liked about the whole Tom Kim isn't long thing. It's like he's 19 years old. He yeah. might there is a chance Tom Kim gets a little stronger in his life. He's he's he, he's a growing boy. <laughs> he's legitimately two years younger two and a half years younger than ludwig oh god that's so funny. who i mean is europe's hero so already yeah yeah tom kim legitimately growing boy maybe he's maybe he's drinking now i mean his birthday was last week maybe the celebrations continue oh, his 21st now? yeah wow okay uh all right josh give me the betting favorites please thank you kindly so yeah I guess that's right. Colin Morikawa is your favorite, but seven and a half to one. Uh, Taylor Moore, who is currently in the lead or tied for the lead at plus 850. Ricky Fowler is 11 to one. Ludwig Aberg, 12 to one. Aaron Ryan, Justin Seller, 14, along with Adam Shank. Um, notably, Peter Quest, the guy who's tied for the lead after 18 holes, nowhere to be found on this board. What are his odds, Josh? Can you let me know when you find those? But, um, and he's 45 to one. So anything that you like here through 18? Ooh. Um, look, we've seen Colin do this before. You think about the players championship. He got off to a really good start. And it's kind of crazy to think. Is Colin Morikawa kind of unreliable? No. No. I I I'm, I really think there's a alternate timeline in which he wins the he would have won the memorial and this would be a completely different conversation. I would say there's an alternate timeline where he doesn't hit that bunker on the drivable par four at Kapalua, dude. Off the tee, he's just and he's, he wins that he's, tournament. He's been the number one win, player in the world since then. Yeah, he wins at like Tory Pines and then he wins at Memorial and then I like that. Yeah, I absolutely think there's. You should if, write. You should write that. Like, just write like the last two years. If Colin didn't blow like the five shot lead at Capello, I mean, there's that one. There's what if he becomes number one one at the uh, Albany, Albany Hero oh, yeah, that's World Challenge. I, yeah, 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 yeah. That one too. Um, so I, I, I'm gonna surpass Colin. Of these, I actually kind of like Ricky at eleven the most. I agree. I mean, but, he's, he's just, he's just, he's just been there. Um, this is pretty darn close to his pre-tournament odds. And we've already mm -hmm. seen him play 18 holes. And now there is no J JT to contend with. There's no Hideki to contend with. There is probably not going to be a Tony Finau to contend with. So I, I, I think Ricky's the, the bet. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, dude, I mean, this is, this is a, are we going to get to 20? 28 are we gonna get to 28 this week mm, i think we got to it felt like today they could have gone lower but they didn't and so i think 22 ish will win josh is that from uh caesar's josh they've set the they've set it at are you at is that a real line or did josh pick up that line i don't know oh no that's just josh making it up he said 26 okay. and a half is the line i'll take uh 24. I'd probably take under being like 25 or lower, but um, it's going it, to, there, there's like, there's like thunderstorms in the forecast all week. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you look at those names and like you said, Ricky Fowler around his pre-tournament price. If I had to go crazy, Sepp Straka is like at 55, I think. And come on. The septic tank. If you want a great week for Europe, having him win, he could shot be on the Ryder Cup team. Shot a sixty-eight. Yeah, only four back. Gets it. Gets off in the morning. I don't hate it. 
how much longer would JT have to struggle before one breaks up with Bones, two dumps Daddy? <laughs> Is that ever ever? Does it ever happen? Man, he loses his card. Does he lose his card? He, uh, I think he could dump him, but like bring him on as a uh, consultant type yeah. of deal. Yeah, that always works out well. But the have, your ex, thing, have your ex lover oversee your new relationship? That always works look, out. The bones thing, I was all I was all over. It's been a mitigated disaster. Yeah, and he has Perfect. even said he said it like jokingly with a smile on his face. Where, yeah, you know, bones. He doesn't really talk me off shots. Well, buddy, you need to be talked off like all your shots now. So it, it's it, really bad. I mean, they want they've won one time together, right? And it and it and it honestly took the stars aligning and Mito getting struck by lightning for that for that one to happen. They they did also win when he subbed in in Memphis one time. Nah, it doesn't count. That was that's yeah. the honeymoon. That's the honeymoon phase. But in this relationship, they have won once. So okay, I'll toss it. Say JT does not make the playoffs. If he doesn't make the playoffs, potentially change it all. And you're Zach Johnson. You don't have eyes on his game until you have to make your pick the week after the tour championship. What the hell do you do? You're, he's gonna pick him. Because he's got, because because he's got Jordan, it, they they would both have to not be on the team for one of them to not be on the team. Yeah, but I'm just like you, you are going to pick a guy you have not seen play golf in a month, which is, I don't know if when's the last time that's happened. Are how long until what are how what are the Ryder Cup odds? Are the Europe is Europe the favorites yet? Because like I'm I'm brewing on Europe winning this thing. I think it's still like you're. I think at uh, William Hill Caesars, it's like plus one seventy, Europe. Uh, and I think that that's come down from like two ish to one, or like I mean. All right, I have uh, this is the three way number, so there's a tie. USA minus one ninety, Europe plus one eighty five. Okay, yeah. Look, and you think about this mighty U.S. team, which is very good, but. You kind of bring in a lot of like Scheffler, Cantley, Xander, Homa, Morikawa. They've never played in Europe. Wyndham Clark's never played in a Ryder Cup team. Uh, Brooks Kepka, I think, is sturdy. But you also, in, none like, of those guys are like captain. Like Justin Thomas was like almost a like de facto captain, right? Like he yeah. was like he would lead the charge. He'd be your vocal leader. If you're waiting on Scotty Scheffler, Xander Shoffley, Patrick Cantlay to rally the team room, we will all be dead. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah, like you said, he's going to pick him. But I could see him, one, with how many people are like, like what if Sam Burns just like catches fire over like the last month or something? Or Cameron Young learns how to putt and he plays very well. Like there's a lot of paths here where jt if he does it's a big if if he does somehow miss miss out on the top 70 like he could definitely be forgotten about if someone goes on a heater All he's right. gonna get picked well, though he is gonna get picked you know what he's gonna do he's gonna shoot like a he's gonna shoot like a 64 tomorrow miss the cut but be like i found it and then we're gonna yeah. do this whole thing over again and then he'll he'll be in the field for the john deere classic <laughs> <laughs> that's patrick mcdonald everybody he'll be here all week at amateur status on twitter a uh, big uh thanks to producer josh's all the hard work behind the scenes you can find me at rick run good this has been the first cut see you tomorrow